Hey, it's Roy Richardson, your friend of the neighborhood tech channel maker, and we're tonight we're gonna talk about checklists and let me turn my volume down. I got a button now to do that. Isn't life great when you have like automation? So, you know, if my volume gets too loud on my sound effects, you can just smack me around and be fine. Alright, we're gonna talk about checklists and how they can benefit your content creation journey, especially for going live. Uh, and in order to do this, I've got amazing guest, Walter Strong the third in the house from the huddle. Hut, 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 good evening, everyone. <laughs> Woo, uh, yep, yeah, and everybody, and uh, so yeah, here we are tonight. We're going to talk about checklists. So, a long time ago, uh, Walter came up with this great checklist, and he has made some enhancements and stuff to it. So, this is version 2.0, and I wanted to definitely talk about it tonight and just thank you to everybody out there that's out there in the community tonight. So, let's get started. We are burning daylight here. Mm -hmm. All right, and go. All right, so checklist for content creation version 2.0. So this is a check. So we're gonna start off first with a checklist for going live, and we'll talk a little bit about each one of those points, and then we'll jump into general checklists for kind of content creation in general, whether you're you know doing Facebook or Instagram or TikTok, whatever your favorite platform may be. Um, so before. Before streaming live, before you go live, here's some things you need to think about. So, mm. and first, you need to pick a topic. Walter, what's your process for picking a topic? Do you have like a you know keyword search? What do you do to kind of figure out what your topic is going to be each week? Great question. Um, for me, definitely um, doing some keyword research. Um, also, looking at in terms of what's what's trending, what's what's most popular uh, that people are identifying with. And then also in terms of just also looking to answer a specific question that a viewer may have um, today or possibly for tomorrow. So those have been my three main um, ways of uh, looking to pick a topic. Okay. And uh, the next step, you want to create a thumbnail. So this is assuming you're going live on YouTube or some other platform. Every place needs a thumbnail of some sort. Uh, I'm a big fan of Canva. Um, Walter, what do you use? Definitely, Canva is definitely the um, my primary t um, graphic design for making uh, thumbnails. But I'm, I'm as we go into 2023, um, I am definitely going to you know look at other options that are available. I mean, you can't go wrong with the pro version, especially yeah. when you got to do background removal of, of a photo or in a picture. Um, one one question I would want to ask you. When you're doing live stream shows, um, what do you find that is more um, more um, compelling to getting more engagement? Using a, a standard type of you know thumbnail that you use for the show every week, or are you kind of changing it up based on each topic and and and, and guests that you may have? On? I I change it up. Um, I, I, I kind of go with kind of, uh, let's see, uh, YouTube likes faces, it mm -hmm. likes expressions, and usually four words, are tr I try to make sure there's no more than four words on a thumbnail because that way on a mobile device, since 70% of people are watching videos on a mobile device, that makes it possible for them to see the words on that thumbnail and make a decision, ooh, do I want to watch this or not? So that's, mm -hmm. that's kind of my mantra for how I do my thumbnails. Mm. Great, yeah, that's definitely a great, a great power tip. Yep. Uh, then you create your show notes, so you kind of figure out what your run a show is. You know, you may call it show notes, you may call it run a show, um, and so you just kind of plan out what that's going to be. Um, you know, what what do you? I use like Google Keep, or I may use uh, Google Docs. Sometimes I use Notion. Depends. What what do you normally use for your show notes or run a show? Pretty much the same Google Docs, or again, I'm, I'm I may be also using Google Docs with a combination of a Canva presentation. Yeah. So I'll initially start with a Google Doc to kind of write out the outline, um, you know, the opening hook, the the, the five bullet points. If you're going to have three to five bullet points, being able to have that room for um, engagement with the audience, and then basically, you know, a summary. So if I'm going to use the, use the Google Docs, I'll use the Google Docs to kind of give me the rough outline of it. And then I trans, 
uh, mid all of that over into a Canva presentation, which I can then share with the audience, similar to what you're doing tonight. Yeah, um, and then uh, schedule your live stream. So I go into I go into Google Studio, and I will I mean YouTube Studio, and I'll schedule my live stream, and I'll go ahead and put in my title and my thumbnail and my description. And I'll have all that out there, and I'll try to put some of the show notes or just some of the stuff that's going to be covered in the show so people know. I even try to put a little hook in there. Hey, you know, are you using checklists to help you create your, your live streams or your content? And do you think about how beneficial that is? So, mm -hmm. um, then the description section. So, as I mentioned, I, I, I do my description. Uh, do you write your description right in the YouTube studio or do you write it on your show notes and then you copy and paste it over? How's your process for that? So because I use StreamYard, I'm, I'm pretty much um, inputting everything from the title to the description. And then from there, um, I then go ahead and then uh, schedule it. But I don't initially schedule it to be published because, like you said, you want to put some additional optimization to to the live stream bef uh, before you go live and so I'm, I'm going into the YouTube studio um, filling out any additional information for the description any important links that I may want to include such as my website um, to be able to get viewers now to the website into the platform and, and different things like the checklist so if an individual is interested in the live stream checklist, they'll have a link they can go to my website and sign up to the email marketing list. So that information has to be there. Also, any important tags that are relevant to the show. And then finally, um, it's important also to look at what category your YouTube channel is listed under. A lot of individuals may not realize that if they're making educational content, the category section down at the very bottom may not read as education it may be reading something else like entertainment and so yeah. you're wondering in a sense why you're not necessarily getting the additional the, the reach or or extra replay value that you want people to come back and watch your videos so it's important to look at that category make sure you're you're listed as an educational channel and then once all of that is done then i kind of go back and then i publish and schedule cool stuff um we got a bunch of people out there so let's uh let's, let's check out see who's out there tonight so uh grandson bishop show teach me something good hey welcome um don't know if you've been here before but thanks for coming by oh my god lala yes yay a checklist uh somebody <laughs> tell me you got a birthday coming up lala I, I don't know why i think that but i'm just gonna say happy birthday <laughs> you need your content to be live and consistent that's why i love roy and tall boy <laughs> <laughs> yep, Tallboy goes live tomorrow night at 8 o'clock, so, uh, on the Lab Tech Show. All right. All right, next up, let's see. I need all the help I can get. Even though I haven't gone live on YouTube yet, I'm still working up to 10 to 12 minutes live on IG. Oh, well, that's really good. Yeah. Uh, you keep doing that, you probably qualify to be able to, to live stream from your PC here soon if you hadn't already done it, because that's one thing they kind of seem to want. They want everybody to... To, if you've got a pattern of going live on Instagram, then they will give mm -hmm. you access, it seems, to that new feature. So, it's saying hi to Mommy Guy and Korean Some Bishop mm -hmm. Show. Hi, how you doing, sir? What's up? Spring Hudgens, hey. It's one D in the house. Hey, saying hi there. Dagan, how you doing tonight? Welcome. Nine, let's see. Interesting. 99% of my videos are live. That's pretty much the way I've gotten lately. Um, I need to go back to doing more recorded because those are really good too. Well, you're live on you on Twitter too. Yes, so tonight I'm mixing it up. I am live on Twitter and LinkedIn and YouTube. Uh, just wanted to give it a try. Cool behind the scenes. He can't mangle. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Uh, <laughs> hey, Lisa. Uh, I can use Canva Pro. Canva Pro is great. I do like it. I I kept wanting to mm -hmm. use their clip art, and that's what made me finally break down and go pro so uh yeah sorry i get put on to them use them already and created my thumbnail for my video i'm learning yeah good deal mm -hmm. i've never done mm -hmm. notes um yeah i i mean I, it's more like bullet points for me walter what's what's your process do you do like a script or you just do bullet points 
I'm doing bullet points um, just as an outline. And, and from there, the more you have more of a run and show that you use, you can ultimately uh, use that as a guide where from time to time, if you have to kind of freestyle or kind of go with the flow of how you see your live stream is going, you always have an outline to go back to if you feel like if you going too much on on a, on a tangent having an outline is good you know I, I like the comment that the one person said that um, they haven't started live streaming on YouTube yet but they've been live streaming on Instagram and so I think that really kind of helps from a discipline standpoint um, depending on how long they are live streaming on Instagram if they're only live streaming for maybe five to ten minutes being able to discipline yourself from an um, five to ten minute 10 minute window and then come over to YouTube and you have a run of show. I think that it really gives you structure. So when you do kind of deviate or go on a tangent, you can pull yourself back. So I think that's good that that, that person is really taking advantage of really building oh. themselves up on another platform. And Lala, thank you so much. <laughs> she just said, you're on demo mode. Oh, I didn't know. Thank you, Lala. I think I was testing something right before the show. And bam. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you for doing that. Yeah, so we were showing behind the scenes. I hope you're enjoying that. Um, <laughs> do tags really work? I've heard some YouTube creators say no. The answer is no. Tags, yeah. YouTube doesn't need your tags anymore. Mm -hmm. They know what your video is about. They literally go and they create. Uh, you could take like your thumbnail, for example, and go to their uh, lab and they'll literally tell you what's in that thumbnail. And then when your mm -hmm. video is playing, they're going to create captions that are actually about 95% accurate for your show, so they don't need your tags anymore. Now, the, mm -hmm. the benefit of tags is if your topic has something that maybe is difficult to spell, and some of you may do variations on that word, it's helpful from that standpoint. It might help somebody find it if they're really bad at spelling and they spell something wrong. Well, those tags may help them find your video. Um, so mm -hmm. really, that's the only benefit. I hate that tools like vidIQ and TubeBuddy make such a big deal about tags. But even now, when they do the tutorial videos, yeah, tags don't really matter anymore. We just include it because it's a nice feature. But that used to be a selling point in the early days for both those tools. So, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see. Yeah. Well, let's see. I've got to start an email list. Yes, we all do. I need to. I know Walter has. Uh, we'll talk later about it. If you join Walter's mm -hmm. mailing list, um, he will send you a free copy of this checklist. Um, mm -hmm. I'll even send him the pretty one if he wants to send that out to you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the info category. Yes. Um, de definitely on category. It's very helpful to go and pick the category that matches your video. While YouTube mm -hmm. doesn't need your help, there are features that slowly roll out that benefit education videos. And I will tell you, the video tutorial videos pay more in AdSense and monetization mm -hmm. than say video. So sadly, gamers make the least uh, unless they have a really hot game. They make the least in AdSense for when they get monetized. Um, and so education is a category that helps pay. Mm -hmm. uh, BG Dagan says his his lives are off the cuff, nothing scripted. It flows how it flows. Yeah, you have a um, your audience is there to talk about beard products there you know you just I really love your audience and I would say don't really need a script for my show it's more to keep me from going too long <laughs> to keep me right. focused uh, is that kind of what is that what you use kind of a script for when you do your show it's just to kind of keep you on track that and plus with the expectation that as we grow as content creators and as we start reaching certain milestones like a thousand subscribers and four thousand hours of watch time um and the opportunity for brand deals sponsorships yeah. are presented to us you're gonna have to fit those things in yeah and if you don't already have a structure in place that kind of flows with your audience so if we're talking about four bullet points on how to have a great live stream by using a live stream checklist you hit those four bullet points and then you open up for engagement. Then when it's time to bring in the, the, the brand deal or sponsorship, you're not going to be struggling with on how to fit that in because you already have a, a, a frame in a format. 
if you're going to try to do collaborations and and do like we from time to do time do by bringing other content creators on a part of our live streams you you use the framework or the bullet point or the run and show as a structure and then if you start to implement those things into your show you can easily fit them in but to dagan's point if you're you know you have an existing live stream and you see how it flows with your audience and everything and you've already taken in consideration of brand deals and sponsorships and that can flow like that then go with it but if you're a person you know who has not thought about these things because right now you're only just thinking about subscribers and views it's about thinking bigger in 2023 yeah well Day dagan has been doing this for a long time he is very on point with his shows and so i'm still an awkward human being trying to do a do a live stream <laughs> right right <laughs> we all are <laughs> and lala said she went and got some some coffee so we're good and then uh, lala was telling me you're on demo mode so uh <laughs> luckily i wonder why brian said you're showing the behind the scenes yep i was showing you the behind the scenes i was in live demo mode so anyway um so yep Hey, Lala. Hey, hey, Lisa. Hey, Brian. Hey, Lala. All right. Um, so we're going to go back to our presentation. Let's see what happens. I'm testing a new feature of Ecamm. Let's see if it blows up or if it stays up. Oh, I was afraid it was going to do that. I was worried it was going to jump ship. That's okay. It'll be okay. Here we go. This, isn't, this was the next slide, so we're okay. I was hoping it was going to keep my slide for me. But here we go. So description section. So we talked about a little bit tags and hashtags. So <laughs> hashtags, on the hand, do... Uh, help the first three hashtags are useful uh, YouTube just kind of lets you use those as a search term uh, so mm -hmm. to speak so you can type in a hashtag and it will bring up all the videos that have that hashtag so hashtags are kind of helpful the first three anyway after that mm -hmm. they're kind of just bonus hashtags they don't do a lot and then publish your stream so you know, for me that's that process of scheduling a stream on YouTube studio mm -hmm. and then promote your stream so Walter, what do you do to promote your live streams? Promoting my live streams can, st and again, this is where, and we'll touch more on it in the show, having an email list. Having an email list where you can help to promote your live streams. Also having um, email to be able to send out to individuals who may not be a part of your uh, email list, but have expressed an interest in wanting to watch the show. So an email can be a good uh, reminder. To, to let them know also using social media to the right uh, social media audience that that really connects with it you know you don't want to go to just every social media to Facebook LinkedIn Twitter and you don't have a, a resonating audience but using social media um, accordingly and then um, ultimately now that we all have the YouTube community tab promoting it also on the YouTube yeah. community tab so those are just some of the ways of promoting it I, I love the community tab. I really get a lot of uh, good interaction there. I'm really enjoying the community tab. So, mm -hmm. because they have awesome people, they come watch my show, and they're an amazing community. Mm -hmm. It's like it's like all my friends show up on on Tuesday nights and hang out with me. So, I absolutely love that. Um, so, next up, you want to set up your overlays. So, if you use some sort of streaming software like OBS or Ecamm mm -hmm. or VMix or Streamyard, whatever you may use, um, set up your overlays. And then music. Music's mm -hmm. cool. I like to have music in the background. So some of my scenes you'll see have music and some don't. It's just mm -hmm. kind of to break things up and so you don't have to listen to my mo monotone voice for so long while I'm, I'm doing the video. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, <laughs> what kind of music? We were, we were talking about a song I had earlier. So um, but I know both of us use epidemic music. Um, so, I mean, you got the concern about copyright strikes and that type of thing. I've had a copyright claim on a short, so one of my mm -hmm. shorts won't play in Russia uh, because of that claim. But I think I can live without. But um, but I, I like to use. Don't epi cough. <laughs> you, can't, you can't hear my video. You can't, can't hear it in Russia, so I'm sorry. Uh, so, but yeah, I love using epidemic sound. Um, if you want to try it out, I do have a link down in my description. It is an affiliate link, so mm -hmm. if you did subscribe, I'd get a free month of epidemic sound so but it'll cost you the same it would be whether you bought click my link or you just go to epidemic sound directly it won't cost you any extra to do that so um just out there and then this is a big one send out your email 
-hmm. So unlike you, who, who, who is smart and has done things like they should, I don't have a mailing list yet. I have all the pieces to one, but I'm in the middle of revamping a website specifically for getting my act together this year. And my day job has kept me from working on it. So, um, so I'm, I'm reaching out and getting a friend to help me out with it to get it going. So, but what's what you know? What do you use for like your mailing list? Like um, you know, Mailchimp or what do you use? Mailchimp at this time, using the free version. And, yeah. Um, just basically, you know, compiling that email list and building building it up, because I, I realize that though YouTube allows us to be able to to live stream and upload videos. It's rented space. Yeah. We are not the owners of it. In the event something happens and we don't meet YouTube's terms and conditions or requirements tomorrow, and they say basically our channel has to be removed, well, you've worked so hard. you put in so much effort and so much passion, tears and sweat and snot. Let's be real. And if you end up having your channel taken away, Having that email marketing list, that email list is gold. You have yeah. to have it. And you have to have it. And I think it works hand in hand when you're using your live stream checklist um, when you're preparing. All right. Time to go live. So before we talk about uh -huh. that, I'm going to go back out because we got so many comments out there. I want to I get caught up on them a little bit. Um, let's see. What are everybody saying? All right. Um, so Lisa Marie says... Marie says, can I do YouTube Live for 15 minutes regularly? Absolutely. I mean, Absolutely. yeah. You can do it from your phone, or if you have streaming software like OBS, which is free, or StreamYard, which is, there is a free version, but it puts a watermark. You can pay mm -hmm. just a little bit and get the watermark removed. Um, Ecamm, if you're a Mac user, Ecamm, I absolutely recommend Ecamm. It's, it's just such a cool product. But anyway, yes, mm -hmm. absolutely, you can, you can go live on YouTube in, in little you know little 15 minute increments um, but pace yourself that there, there's this thought process that you gotta go live every day on YouTube and that's not true you are better off going live or going on, doing stuff on YouTube less often and getting your quality up and and be consistent in the quality and maybe have a cadence so for me you can come here at 9 o'clock every Tuesday night and unless something really crazy happens I'm going to be mm -hmm. here. And so that's mm -hmm. my consistency. And then I try to supplement during the week. I'll do some shorts. My goal is to do three a week. I'm a little behind this week. It's been an interesting week. Um, and then I do some long form recorded videos as well, or as they call video on demand, so to speak. I do some tutorials and I try to focus it very down and chop it up so it's very concise so you don't have to listen to me rant for 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's see. Yeah, Lisa, absolutely. Go for it. Yes, you definitely should. As a starter, does it have to be? No. You could do a two-minute video. You could do a five-minute video. Mm -hmm. there, there's no limit. Uh, the only thing that has limits are shorts. So if you're specifically doing shorts, they have to be vertical, and they have to be 60 seconds or less. Actually, like 59 seconds or less. Um, so if you are doing shorts, those are the only thing that has a time limit on it. Everything else... You could mm -hmm. stream for 24 hours straight if you had the, the, the energy and the content to do it. I mean, you just could. YouTube will let you. Um, I don't know what rewatchability would be like unless you just did some amazing things. To, you know. uh, and then Lala says, Walter, thanks for the free list. Yep. Uh, yeah, welcome. you can do it. As Dagan says, you can do a live any link you want. Uh, uh -huh. Thank you. Yep, I'm nervous. Just starting to get the hang of putting uh, content out there. Yeah. Um, so... I hear you, Lisa. I was on. I was at first. Yeah, we all were nervous, and now mm -hmm. I, I get an adrenaline rush being here. So it's. I just really enjoy it. Um, so. I'm sorry. What was the name of that individual that said they were nervous again? Oh, Lisa Maria. Lisa Maria. Yeah. I get nervous every time I go live. I'm. I'm, I'm being honest, but. I embrace that nervous nervousness. I acknowledge it for what it is. And then I use ways to take that energy of nervousness to give me now courage to do it. So for me, I listen to music. I find me some music to listen to and I just focus on, you know, almost like an athlete or even, you know, sports entertainment and wrestling. 
I, I just find something to really get my energy up to translate that nervousness now into a positive to say, okay, I'm ready for the show. And most importantly, um, this show is not about me. It's about my audience. And if that audience is just one person, I need to get my, my game face on to take that nervousness into a, some energy of I'm going to add value just to one person. So uh, find you something that you can channel that nervousness, that nervous energy into something that gives you some confidence to say, I'm going to add value to someone today. Yeah, definitely agree with that. Um, yeah, because and I, you know, I was joking with somebody, else, no, but I was serious at the same time. That nervous feeling is your inner being wanting to be the best you possibly can be. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, you know, if you were just doing it and you didn't care, you wouldn't be nervous. Mm -hmm. You care mm -hmm. right. about what you're doing. Yeah. And so that nervous thing is like, I want to make sure I'm the best I possibly can be. Uh, and so that's, you know, just how that goes. Um, that's right. That's right. So that's, that's how I feel about that. And everything's going crazy. All right. Back to the presentation. Mm -hmm. Okay. All here right. we go. All right. Cool. Um, why is everything going crazy? There we go. Ta da! Alright. <laughs> Let's turn the sound down. So, anyway, it's time to go live. Mm -hmm. So, you turn on your system. Um, mm -hmm. I've had some debates with some creators. I will occasionally reboot my system before I start. If I've had any kind of weirdness during the day, mm -hmm. anything weird, especially on my Windows machines. I have to reboot Windows machines a little more often because they have they're prone to memory leaks with certain if you're running really heavy software and so I do recommend maybe rebooting your system before you start. But if you're one of those people that turns your system off and well you gotta turn it on. And mm -hmm. then your streaming service. So whatever you're using as your streaming software, you can you can go live directly on YouTube. You don't have to have any software. You could go and hit go live on YouTube and do that. But um, you know, if you like doing cool things like overlays and changing scenes and stuff like that, well, mm -hmm. then you need some sort of streaming software like StreamYard, like uh, Walter uses. And mm -hmm. then, you know, bring on your guests. So you want to do a tech check before the show starts. So Walter came on my show 15 minutes early and we, we just tested things out and went through some scenes and talked about stuff ahead of time. Um, if it's a guest that you've never had on your show, maybe you've never had a conversation, I would recommend getting them on earlier. And the reason I say that is that that water cooler talk that you have before the show loosens each other up and kind of gets ready. Walter and I have been on shows together multiple times, and so and we're friends, mm -hmm. and so I we don't have we don't have to have that water cooler conversation that much before we do. But not mm -hmm. not like if you have a guest that's going to be cold that you've never mm -hmm. had on your show before uh, that maybe you don't even know you've only conversed via email or. <laughs> Or Facebook or Instagram Messenger. Um, mm -hmm. So, uh, what's what's your kind of process whenever you have guests on, Walter? If it's a first time guest, we're going to try to before the show, primarily before the show, um, try to do some type of form of discovery call where we can be able to have a conversation with one another, get to know one another, get to know each other about one another's channels about each other's uh, audience that we, we are trying to reach and how our collaboration is going to add value to each of our audiences. Uh, find out some things that you as a content creator may not like uh, or may not be comfortable. It, it's in, I, I've also learned in, in my, uh, my trial and error, sometimes you may be looking for someone you want to bring on as a guest and they may not be comfortable on being on camera but they don't necessarily communicate it to you but then you bring them on yeah. the day of the show you're wondering why you don't have a picture of them you know why you don't have them live yeah. and you're getting this this picture of them like well, what's the matter Will you, is your camera working and so sometimes having that opportunity to do a quick discovery call works um and then lastly doing a discovery call helps you to be able to understand if your niches are aligned i'm not saying you have to have the exact niche but there's some form of an alignment of a, a niche because the last thing you want to do is bring someone on that just all they want to do is talk about vlogging 
and their family and that and that's good but you may be focused on youtube tips and strategies and you bring someone on and you're like we're going to talk about this and they're like um that's not really my wheelhouse well now you got to go live what are you going to do yeah so yeah uh and and definitely yeah i you know it's and then yeah and you don't have to have a guest i i just um i do think sometimes people get tired of hearing me talk by myself so to make me more interesting i bring on others or actually to have somebody interesting i bring on others so well i, I beg to differ on that i, I learn a lot from you and you, i learn i learn from your guests but i learn just as twice as much um when it's just you by yourself as well and, and you wow. and you can poll your audience on that <laughs> they're just nice people that's all it is they may say nice <laughs> things about me but it's just because they're nice people so gotcha. um check your audio mm -hmm. audio is key you can have bad video if you have great audio mm -hmm. so you need to have great audio um you know mm -hmm. you've got the samsung qu is that which mic you have which mic do you have Walter. On uh, the Audio Technica 2100, oh. I think it is. That's an awesome mic, too. So, yeah, definitely, you don't have to spend a fortune on a mic. There are good mics out there between 60 to 120 bucks that are really good. Um, I mean, you can spend a crazy amount if you want, um, but it's, you know, it's kind of like, yay, all the sh movies are in 3D now, but if it's a bad movie, it's just a bad movie in 3D. So, is the audio really makes a difference. You want it to sound good. And then you want to check your lighting. Uh, mm -hmm. And this is kind of taking place over time. I was watching an old video I did with somebody. Mm -hmm. And man, my lighting just wasn't as nice as theirs. And you could just tell. It was a night and day difference. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just, yeah. their video is so pretty. And mine, mine, mine just looks okay. So you mm -hmm. definitely want good lighting once you get to the point where you can afford to kind of make some investments. But you don't have to do that day one. Um, and then you want to check your internet. You want to make sure that your internet is performing well. You might want to run a speed test before the show, that type of thing. But uh, you'll, you'll definitely run a speed test when the show is happening. So if you mm -hmm. have any lags, it'll show up. And so, But mm -hmm. anyway, it's, it's good stuff. Um, so, and then get your game face on. You got to mm -hmm. get excited, man. You can expect people to be excited about what you're doing, but you you could sound like Eeyore. Oh, get your game face on <laughs> and go live. You know, so, you know, Eeyore's just not going to make it on, on live streams, I don't think. It'll be entertained for a minute, but, you know, it's kind of like a dance, dancing bear. Mm -hmm. you're, you're not fascinated by how well they dance. You're just fascinated by the fact that they dance. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. right, so what, what right. do you do? What do you do to get your game face on, you know, before you get started? What, what you know? You know, like psych yourself out. What do you do, Walter? What, how do you get excited before you get on the show? One, and if you take nothing else from this this great live stream, um, number one, being myself, being comfortable with who I am on camera. Yeah. To understand that I'm a work in progress. That I'm <laughs> going to make mistakes. Because uh, in the past, I would just kind of really just take myself to task after a live stream. And say, oh, I didn't do this right, and I didn't do that right, and uh, I've come to the conclusion that I, I'm a work in progress, and so not every live stream is going to come out perfect, but there should be a level of improvement, and that starts with me being myself. Then number two, every now and then, if my wife and daughter don't threaten to throw something at me, I just throw my hands in the air and just have a good scream to get all that nervousness out of me. You know, of course, there's there's a price if if you have family and wife and kids. There's a price with that, so you can only get away with that so long. And then yeah. three, just I go back to music. I find me yeah. some music, and I'll just continue to just play it, and, and it just helps me. Uh, so when it's time for me to go, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, <laughs> we yep. are live. Good stuff. All right. And then I always, I, I do this, but I don't do this with the passion I need to give the opening hook. So, you know, countdown timers are out. Uh, even saying who you are really is out, they say. So you're supposed to just come on immediately. Hey, if you're going to watch this stream, I'm going to tell you about checklists and why you need them. And let's get started. 
and you know, it's been a couple of episodes where I literally like went right into it, introduced the guest so quick the guest wasn't even ready. It's like what? What? Oh, we live? Okay. <laughs> but yeah, I already told them. I said, "Hey, I'm going right into it." And they didn't take me seriously. They thought, "Oh, you're probably gonna do like a 30 second countdown timer." No, we're no countdown timers. We're going live now. So. Mm -hmm. All right, and then you're, you're wrapping up. You're getting to the end of the broadcast. By the way, we're not at the end of our broadcast, so don't go anywhere yet. Uh, right. But the point being is, as you're wrapping up your live stream, then you know, giving some thing, food for thought. What what are things you can say that's going to give your community something to think about? So, you maybe a question a day, uh, definitely a call to action, um, yes. and then definitely you want to thank your guest. And it says thank your audience, but I want to say thank your community. Um, because right. you guys are an audience, you guys are a community. I, I, I've been joking. We should call ourselves the troublemakers. So I, I, so I think our community should be the troublemakers. I don't know. I took a poll. Like a couple that. people liked it. I haven't heard anybody negative yet, but so I think about that. So what's your, uh, Walter? I didn't come up with a question of the day. You got a question for the day? <laughs> question of the day would be um, uh, which of Question of the day. You put me on the spot. <laughs> Question of the day would be: um, How do you help you? How do you help yourself get game ready for your live stream? Is it yeah. you know throwing your hands up and screaming, playing some music, or just accepting yourself for who you are? You know, get, leave that in the chat. And if you're watching the replay of this, give us your feedback on in the comment section. Hashtag Team Team Replay. There you go. Something like that. And then the you know, call to action, I'm supposed to do things like, uh, you know, tell you to subscribe. You know, but, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> um, all right. So now you kind of give your closing. Now, here's the catch. Mm -hmm. Don't mm -hmm. let people know you're getting ready to end the stream. You just kind of finish the topic and say, okay, great. Thanks so much for watching. Because as soon as you say, well, that's it, we're done, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of your viewers are going to leave. They're like, oh, Oh, it's over. Okay, I don't need to keep watching because he's just going to talk for 15 minutes after this. And then you right. cue the outro music, and then you hit that big red button that says end. Whatever your software may have, it may not be a red button, but end stream, uh, you know, finish, whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. So, and then here's what you do after. After your video has been published and it's out there and you've, you've completed your live stream. You add chapters, mm -hmm. you add your end screens, mm -hmm. and you add cards. So, Walter, what's, what's kind of your process for doing that? Um, chapters first, because okay. um, then I use that as an opportunity to go back and watch the live stream from beginning to end. Um, so I'm putting my chapters in, but I'm also critiquing myself on how I can get better. Yeah. Um, what mistakes that I make. Uh, sometimes when you when you go right into a live stream, you don't pace yourself and you can lose, cause yourself to end up uh, being out of breath. Um, and as a result, you know, you may start coughing a whole lot. So I, I look for things like that while I'm putting the chapters on. And um, and if I see something that's working, uh, I'll make a mental note of that and say, OK, this works. Um, so chapters is a way of being able to you know in sports they talk about watching film watching film of the opponent but also watching film of of the individual so it's it's my watching film session and then um for some reason for me being able to put in screens and um info cards doesn't happen right away um uh, so i always end up putting them um on a day later because yeah. i guess youtube and in the streaming software that i'm using with Streamyard they haven't finished behind the scenes stuff so but if you're live streaming directly from youtube if you have the ability to, to put your info cards and you in in, in, uh, in screens and do, go ahead and do it right away so the reason that you can't is because if you're doing anything higher than 720 mm -hmm. you're in high def so if you're in 1080 or 4k you're in high def so you'll notice that the, if you go in the studio you'll see the standard dev version is available so a less than high quality versions out there mm -hmm. and until it finishes processing the high def version you cannot add the you can't add the ends the, the end screens or your cards you can add your mm -hmm. chapters 
but you right. can't add. So that's what's going on. You have to wait, I guess, through processing. If you do like 4K, I have seen it take like 16 hours before the video is available. If I do 1080, usually 11 hours it, it shows up and then I can go and add my cards and my and my end screens. So, and why are end screens important? Because that is an opportunity to say, hey, please subscribe and watch mm -hmm. this next video. Because YouTube has two things. One, they want you to keep people on YouTube. Right. And two, for your benefit, you want to put something else that you've done out there so people can see more stuff you've done. That's why playlists are big. We didn't mention playlists in this list, but playlists are huge because YouTube mm -hmm. would love for somebody to click on one of your playlists and just keep watching videos by you because it keeps them on the channel, assuming that your playlist is interesting. Um, so, But that's another tip out there that you can do. Just what can you do to keep people on YouTube and especially keep on your channel? Playlist, end cards, cards. You know, info mm -hmm. cards. So those are things. All right. Back to the sharing. All right. All right. So then, um, so once somebody's comment on your video, maybe you want to comment on your video, maybe have a thought. Sometimes I'll have a thought after the show or mm -hmm. I will say something incorrect. Uh, I, I'm, I was misinformed and I will mm -hmm. go and correct that with a pinned comment because I want so much for you to be able to fact check every fact check everything I say because First of all, you shouldn't just assume that what somebody says something is legit. You need to look it up, you need to learn for yourself, and you need to be an informed viewer. Um, mm -hmm. So I want to make sure if I make a mistake that I own up to it and I let you know, hey, I messed up. And so here's what's mm -hmm. going on. And then repurpose your content. So you made this great live stream. You can now take snippets of it and make shorts or YouTube mm -hmm. uh, over on uh, Reels over on Instagram or turn into a TikTok, you know, that type of thing. Um, right. And I'm not sure why I said add your cards twice. I was just so excited about adding cards that I put it there twice. <laughs> exactly, so, right. How do, how do you repurpose your content, Walter? Uh, for me, it's, it's a matter of um, repurposing them into shorts. Um, you know, finding, uh, and again, I think doing chapters is a benefit where I'm going back and watching the live stream. I already have the chapters, but then there may be some other parts within that that one chapter where I can say, OK, there's a short, there's a short. And I, I find by repurposing them into shorts, um, it gives me more content to post versus struggling to come up with content <laughs> ideas and struggling with meeting a goal of per, uh, posting three shorts, a, you know, a week that you said. If, you know, you can do a live stream for about 45 minutes to hour you may easily pull out eight shorts from just that one live stream. Yeah. I just wait for Walter to drop those nuggets of truth in my live stream, and then I go put him out there as, as shorts for my for my channel. So and There you go. <laughs> there you go. All right. Let's see. Hey, Philip, how are you doing out there tonight? I'm glad I finally knew who you are. But you had to tell me. I could not guess. But then I found oh. out your dog is named Fishstick. I should have known your dog was named Fishstick. So. <laughs> Okay. And then Brian said, I actually meant that I liked the behind the scenes angle. Now I miss it. I'm sorry, bro. I'll, I'll, I'll try to add it back here in a little bit. So, and, and Lala saying hi to be Gigi Grooming and well, Dagan and uh, Philip. And then, hey, Lisa Maria saying hi. And just everybody shouting out there. I like you guys doing that. That's really cool. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. I just hit. Community. Uh, Creates and Bishop Show. I just hit 11,000 subs on my main channel. How do I know when and how to find sponsors? If you've got 11,000 viewers, 11,000 subs, and your views are pretty good, um, I would argue that the time is now to go and, and find, but you need to find things that fit your niche. Mm -hmm. you, you don't want to go advertising. Let's, if you're, I, and I apologize, I don't know what your channel's about, um, but let's say, for example, your show is a sports show. Well, probably advertising butter is probably not going to be the thing but advertising maybe you know footballs or basketballs or something or maybe you know other sports items baseball bats baseball gloves whatever your niche may be you know reaching out to somebody that does something that's sports related if your channel's about sports totally makes sense and then a lot of times they may ask you so and you need to have a value proposition you know you gotta say this is what my channel can do for you because i have this many viewers I believe that I can benefit your 
benefit your product by making it part of my show. And then my suggestion, and, and we want to hear definitely what Walter's got to say because he's, he's got a views on this as well, is to integrate it as part of the show as opposed to, hey, let me stop right now. We're going to talk about our sponsor being this. If possible, I think it makes a much more uh, a better impression to be able to, to incorporate that product into your show if possible. Sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's a, uh, you know, Shopify is my sponsor. So if Shopify mm -hmm. is your sponsor, okay, maybe it doesn't make sense to fit into your show. I did see a couple of neat videos where um, a couple of creators said what they did. They would do this scene where they would play one character and then they would be their, their live streamer self. And they would have a conversation about the product. Hey, why do you like that product? It's because it does this for my show. And that's the other part is only do products that you believe in. You can't mm -hmm. sell something. If you won't personally use it, don't don't sell your soul for that, okay? And then realize your value. Really big to realize what your value is to make sure you don't sell your stuff short. Maybe the first kind of sponsor, you, you give them a real deal because you want to show other sponsors that you can benefit mm -hmm. their product. So maybe that's how you get your foot in the door. And then based on how you handle one product promotion, others will reach out to you or you can reach out to others that you think makes sense for you. So, Walter, what's your thoughts on that? So, let's let's take the analogy. Oh, we lost you there, hang on. You froze up, hopefully you'll come back. Come back, hang Walter. On. Oh, he's back. I froze up, I apologize. <laughs> All this, right. This is, good. this is gonna be a good show. <laughs> All right, so let's take, let's take the example that, that the gentleman's a sports channel. And one sponsor that you could go after would be someone like um, Indeed or Career Builder or LinkedIn. You say, well, what's the connection with a job search company with you being a sports channel? If you think about a sports team, they hire multiple people from an announcer, from a, time, a, sc a scorekeeper to individuals who are ushers and, and leading people in. And you could say, hey, look, if you are an individual who needs to improve your resume, um, come over here to Indeed. Because look at how many people that sports has been created. You may want to connect with a G League team from your basketball. So we're just assuming that your channel is a sports channel. But being able to think outside the box, reaching out to companies, that may have a need like that, that want to promote for, 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 for hiring of individuals like that versus trying to get in the NBA or, or, or in the NFL, look at it from a different angle of how many people are employed just because 10 men or women run up down the court playing a basketball and look at the jobs that are created. Instant sponsorship immediate. So hopefully that's helpful to you. Yeah. And that's good stuff. I say, Credence, we need to we need to hook up. I I think your success would be great. Could think about what you've already done. If you already hit that many subs, you're already doing a lot of things right. So I I would love to have you as a guest on the show sometime. So uh, please reach out to me. I'm 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 out there on Twitter and Instagram, and so you can message me on any of those any of those platforms. So yeah, definitely uh, definitely would like to to talk to you anyway. And then yeah. Uh, congratulations on the subs. Yeah, uh, Lala does a lot of sponsorship. She has a lot of sponsors on her show, um, and just she's a crafting community, and so she reaches out to different sponsors and says, "Hey, I want to feature your product on my show." At the same time, though, they reach out to her now because her show is continuing to grow, and she has such a big crafting community. And so, it's just a synergy. I hate using buzzwords, but synergy. It's that synergy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So. Now maybe once a week or every two weeks. Listen, Marie, I'd go once a week at least. Once a week. I, there's some some of those Sean Candles of the world say you need to go live twice a week, and they say Monday and Thursday. I don't know why. That was just mm -hmm. their picks. You need to go twice a week. You need to do Monday and Thursday. Uh, and I tried to follow that, but it just led to madness. So, But I do mm -hmm. think you know, at least once a week is a good cadence to start out. And then if you're into shorts, shorts are a great way to supplement in between. You know, just exactly. if it stops being fun, don't do it. Okay, this it, this is about 
you know, having fun at the same time. You know, definitely getting a message out that you think is important for your viewers and also having a good time while you do it. If you get to the point where you feel like you're burning out and you're in a hamster wheel, you've got to take a break. So, yes. you have to give yourself grace. All right. Let's see what happens. One. Da, 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 da. All right, back to the show. Hang on. Back to the sharing. Don't you hate when the windows go crazy? Mm. There we go. All right, there we go. Back. Mm, back to the sharing. There we go. All right. So we we added cars twice. Um, this is Walter. <laughs> He's awesome. He came up with this checklist originally, uh, and then we collaborated on making it make the pretty slides tonight. And um, definitely, once you reach out to him, I have links to him in the description, um, and I will put a link to his website. Now, to go beyond this, let's say, for example, you are a content creator, but you don't do live streams. You want to know how to make your videos on TikTok or Facebook or Instagram mm -hmm. or Twitch or wherever you may be. Well, mm -hmm. of course, Twitch is more of a live platform. Really define your objective and your target audience. You gotta, you've got to, you kind of figure out what's going to be your objective in this content creation journey because if you don't have a, it basically just boil it down, what is your why? Mm -hmm. Why are you doing what you're doing? I do what I do because I like sharing information. I do really deep research. I've taken a ton of courses with different creators. I watch a lot of videos just to make sure that the science backs up what I'm talking about. Um, and then I also compare notes with other content creators and say, hey, what's working for you? Um, and so uh, Walter and I are strong, are, are friends with a lot of different creators who are way bigger than we are and, and really amazing people. And they are nice enough to share, yeah, this is what's working for me and this isn't, this isn't working. And so I like sharing that information with others so that you, know, you can learn and, and improve your game while I'm at the same time trying to work and improve my game. Um, mm hmm What's what's your thoughts there, Walter, on that? Ah, uh, no, I, I I I think you said it all in that one that one shot. <laughs> I don't think you need to add anything else. You know, what's your why? What yeah. what 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 made you drive and get in the car and break the speed limit to race home to set up a bunch of lights and a camera to go live? What's your why? And once you have yeah. that why, build on it. Yeah. And then conduct research on popular trends and topics. So, you know, if you're if you're trying to stay with trends and topics, then you can do keyword research using YouTube or uh, Google. Or there is if you do VidIQ or TubeBuddy. I'm a TubeBuddy fan for small channels. I think VidIQ is better for big channels. That's just been my personal experience and and, and conversations I've had. Um, the the you pay a lot of money for vidIQ, so you better have a channel big enough to earn some money in order to afford it anyway. Um, mm -hmm. But they do have some really good analysis that's really helpful. But both of them have keyword searches that do a really good job of kind of tell you what the trends are. Um, there's keyword.io, um, there's Google Trends. There's a lot of places you can go to see what's popular right now. And then if that makes sense for the topic that you are doing, then you should do it. If you are doing a fishing channel then i don't think you know doing a, a show about bowling is going to match with your audience if that's a trending thing so I don't know. is bowling trending on tiktok somebody from tiktok tell me uh script writing storyboarding so you may want to you know write a script or do just bullet points or i've seen some people do storyboarding i mean they really went in deep because they were going to do a video with a lot of different shots and they needed to plan it out so that they could like think about the locations they were going to go and the camera angles they needed. So if you are one of those people that's got like all those cameras and you really want to, to fine tune it, then you may have to storyboard it out just to make sure you think about, oh, I want to come at me from this angle over here and that type of thing. So, you know, just something to think about um, mm -hmm. as part of that process. And then audio visual. Uh, equipment setup so of course as we said earlier audio regardless of whether you live stream or record videos audio is king and then video is second runner up so definitely want to make sure that your video looks good as well uh, but you can use a cell phone 
to you can use your mobile phone to record your videos. Mobile phones, there's not a mobile phone I can think of now that doesn't do at least 4K. I mean, That's I, right. you know, um, well, at least 1080. Now, every mobile phone, regardless of how cheap, does probably at least 1080. Um, so, and then choose and set up shooting locations. So, if you're doing a location-based shoot for your videos. Like if you're doing a prank in Walmart, well then you're gonna have to choose a location of Walmart to do the prank. Uh, but mm -hmm. by the way, Walmart, <laughs> YouTube is demonetizing channels that are doing pranks inside retail establishments and such, especially if you're mm -hmm. dressing as salespeople in that store and that type of thing, or associates and that type of thing. So be aware of that. Mm -hmm. Just you know, also you can't go cussing. Cussing is bad for videos. You'll get demonetized. So. Frack on the frack on the blink frack on the frack. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Unless you're Yosemite Sam, then it's perfectly okay. <laughs> so, uh, record and edit footage. So, you know, you got to record it. And then after you record it, you know, then you got to edit it. So, you got to make it into something that might want to, you know, there's different things you can do, like add B-roll, that type of thing. I like adding B-roll to my videos so that you're not having to see my face the whole time um, because I'm not near as interesting. So, the B-roll is interesting, and I like doing that. Mm -hmm. um, add background music like like this anyway add background music and sound effects <laughs> and voiceover uh, depending on what your video how you're doing your video um, mm -hmm. and if you have an issue with your audio then you might be better off going back to the house and then record a voiceover to kind of make up for what your audio lacks so and then this is for fancy people I can't do mm -hmm. this but the people that have learned video editing go out and do color correction and grading mm -hmm. and it, and then they do cool things like record their videos in S-Log, whatever that is. And yeah. then and then they do color grading in Final Cut Pro or Adobe Premiere uh, or DaVinci Resolve, which will do color grading, I'm told. Um, so if you're really trying to make a fancy video and you want like the highest quality and you're going to be meticulous and detailed, then that's something you might have to do. Mm -hmm. And then add special effects or animations uh, or B-roll. I put it, I should have probably put B-roll here as well. So I like to do B-roll. Um, I mentioned that already. And then finalize and export your video in your desired format. So, you know, uh, YouTube likes MP4. Mm -hmm. So if you're on a Mac, I know Mac, a lot of Mac things default to MOV, but YouTube prefers MP4. So please give YouTube MP4. Your videos process faster that way. Trust me, I've seen it take forever on an uploaded video because I did the wrong format. I didn't know, but now I do. And then upload and publish to your chosen platform. So if it's Instagram or wherever it may be, upload. And then promote your video through social media and other marketing channels. So you go out and wherever you have a presence that people pay attention to you, those are the places to go to say, hey, I got this video coming out, you're gonna to wanna to watch it. I even mm -hmm. promote shorts, uh, cause sometimes I'll do a short, I'm really proud of it, and I'll go and promote it somewhere. Mm -hmm. uh, I, have, I have not promoted any shorts on LinkedIn yet. Walter, you've been doing some shorts on LinkedIn. What's, what's, uh, what's kind of your thought process there with that? Or maybe not so much focused to be shorts, but. Well, it, for me, I'm, I'm kind of positioning it as, short, as a short form content. So by be positioning it as a short form content, it it's a it's number one showing LinkedIn um, as a content creator that I'm, I'm I'm trying to post native content on to LinkedIn. Um, I've 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 learned through trial and error if you're constantly sharing um, content from another platform such as YouTube to LinkedIn, uh, the reach and the visibility is not going to be as great versus if you're posting original content. Um, so it's a matter of just getting into that native habit of just posting original native content and then um, building upon that, um, especially when you're on a platform like LinkedIn or on Instagram or a tick or a top. Yeah, and, and the, the other thing is Instagram hates it when you have TikTok watermarks on your videos, mm -hmm. by the way. So if you can make the video outside of TikTok, and then upload it to TikTok, then you'll have a copy that's pristine that you can load into YouTube Shorts and Instagram Reels, uh, Facebook Reels. So just think about that. They don't like when the TikTok logos are on there because it, 
Mm. It tells it where it's been. So, and then after you do things, we've talked about this before. After you do it, measure, analyze mm. your performance metrics, see what's bringing people, you know, uh, and gather the feedback. Say, hey, you know, let's see what's going on. They, does anybody like it? Why is it at, fif- at five minutes and fifteen seconds, everybody just stopped watching? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So. That's the kind of thing you find out by looking at charts and graphs. All the platforms, once you get a little serious on it, have those analytics for you to look at. Um, even Facebook, even though I don't really have a presence on Facebook, will let me go and look at analytics to see how bad what little content I put out there does. Mm-hmm. Um, so, anyway. And that's the way it was for all you content creators out there. So. Let's see, I still got a bunch of people still saying all kinds of stuff out there. Let's go see what they're saying. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. So I did a live some one time. Yeah, so one time that was about three and a half hours. Wow. How mm-hmm. did that go? Did that go pretty well? I'd be curious about that. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't go beyond 12 hours because it won't show up anymore as a video on demand. Really? Beyond 12 mm-hmm. hours doesn't show up as a video on demand. That is good to know. I did not know that. Because I was thinking about doing a 24-hour marathon. Um, I once did a six hour live car chase. Wow. Okay. Cool. That sounds cool. Oh, you, you must hang out with official Ken. That's what I'm thinking. Maybe you hang out with official Ken. Uh, mm-hmm. thank you, Walter. I just get nervous doing regular tape video. Oh, that's good. <laughs> Brian mm-hmm. says, how do you resist the urge to touch your face on camera? I just touch my face on camera. I try not to, but I, I had to. Oh, or if you got a guest, you switch to the guest and then you can touch your face. That's that's what you do. So <laughs> how do you resist the urge of touching? Yeah, you know, how do you do that? <laughs> I, I wanna I wanna be as transparent as natural as I can because you know, it's I'm 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 striving towards pres- a, a presentation of of, of excellence, but from time to time, I, I may go like this. I'm, I may go like this while I'm trying to think. My eye may go like that, <laughs> and I just try to go with it. Uh, now, if you constantly see me doing that every two minutes, now there's a problem there. But I, I would just go with the flow, and then when you watch back on it, maybe it was you know, sometimes like right now, I'm sitting in a chair that's very uncomfortable. And I'm trying not to move so much where it can become evident on camera. And so I know I need to buy me another cam, uh, another chair. Yeah. So sometimes something may happen. It could be a, an effect or a cause of something else. So, but I, I wouldn't get over, blown over about it. Yeah. Now, Dagan says he's going to start another channel. Dagan, what's your other channel going to be about? Are you still thinking about it? Inquiring minds want to know. We want to know what your new channel is going to be about. We want to know. We want to know. We want to know. We want to know. <laughs> <laughs> PG Groom, I have five channels on it. Wow, five channels. channels. How do you manage that? That would make me crazy. Yeah. That would make me crazy. Uh, mm-hmm. Let's see. Wow, credence. Yeah. Can you test a live stream by doing a private live stream to test your equipment and set up an order to put? Yes, you absolutely can. You can do mm-hmm. a private live stream. When you do your scheduling, you can tell it it's going to be private. Uh, or if you just uh, go right, if you're doing it well, yeah, that would be the best way is to, to schedule it and then set it for private when you do it. Um, and so, yeah, that and that way, yeah, definitely agree. That would be a good way to put your guests at ease. Uh, mm-hmm. Samson Q2U, yeah, the Samson Q2U is a fantastic mic mm-hmm. as well. Um, I really like it. Lying is looking good. Yeah, I've. I, I finally bought uh, I bought a small rig, uh, 120D. Uh, actually, Santa Claus brought it to me, and then I've got a parabolic uh, dome on it with a soft box. So pretty happy with the setup. Um, so yeah, got one gig up, one gig down. I do too, man. Fast internet is a beautiful thing. Good content. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Brian. I really appreciate it. I think Walter needs to grow out that beard. <laughs> <laughs> I'm working on it. I'm working on it, BG. I'm, I'm working on it. What I don't like, and so if you want to go back and look at my older videos, so I swear in the last 12 months, so I like I had a lot more black right in the middle. I don't know what's mm-hmm. happened. I have been in a lot of stress, but that's a different thing. But it's there's there's mm-hmm. less black, but also my beard is thicker. So, but we'll save that for an episode of Dagan's show. We'll go talk about beards on Dagan's show. 
Mm -hmm. I always do daily polls during our live streams. Yeah, that's good. I have tried. I don't have a moderator, so it is challenging to try to do a live poll mm -hmm. and do the live stream at the same time. I've tried and failed. Um, and so I, I may be on the verge of getting a moderator. Um, I actually have um, uh, Mr. Moderator is going to be on my show uh, in March. So we'll do it. Mm -hmm. Always music. Yes, I do love music. Love it. Uh, let's see. The mic in front of you is not picking you up. It's another mic, maybe a camera. Well, that would be interesting. Let's hope I am on the right mic. Oh, I wish I could do this a lot sooner. My NV7. Oh, wow. Wow. I bet my sound's amazing now compared to before. Man. John, I should have had you on the first of the show to tell me that. So I'm not having, <laughs> I am not having the best night ever. See uh, now, I see challenge. now. We just talked about beating ourselves up. <laughs> <laughs> see, Mer see, we talk about beating ourselves up. Oh, and you know, I it, I never picked up on it. I, I and I apologize, but oh man, yeah. I wish I could go back and edit the audio on the video and, and that, so and then repost it. So I can, because I do have <laughs> ISO. But because thankfully, um, with eCam, you can you have ISO for video and audio. Now mm -hmm. I've always had audio, but. Uh, so hey, good evening. Wow. Hey, Florence, how you doing tonight? Hey, Florence. And then mommy got saying, Hey, John, I always do end screens, but never cards. Just forget, yeah, I will do cards. So, say for example, I may mention that I did a previous video about something, I will go back and find in the video where I mentioned a previous video and I'll put a card there. Mm -hmm. Um, because if I've done a better job in another video about going deeper on a specific topic. I want to point people to that video to go where I go deeper on that particular topic so that they have that. So audio is coming from his camera. Yeah. Thank you for, I know now. What's up, Brother Ryan? Hey, Equip Institute. Hi, everybody. Hey, John. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. Let's see, Walter, do you ever interview a guest who is someone that's lost when it, when you, when it comes to streaming? There's a lot of non-technical people out there. Why didn't that? There we go. Sorry. There's a comment. It didn't want to show up. Walter, do you ever interview a guest who is someone that is lost when it comes to streaming? There's a lot of non-technical people out there. Um, I've I've yet to do that, but if if the opportunity came and it would be something that would really add value to to that 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 community or, or audience, um, certainly. I think it begins it begins with willingness to learn. Um, you know, how do you, do, how do you cultivate, I'm trying to think of a title centered around your question. How do you cultivate a willingness to want to really learn how to be a great live streamer? And then just kind of crafting your, your show around that. So that way you're not kind of focusing so much on one person's either a ignorance of it or lack of knowledge of it. Yeah. Because when you use the word ignorance, that kind of, that sounds kind of harsh. But if you say, you know, how do I move from a place of lack of knowledge of how to do this to become an, uh, an expert at doing it? So I think it kind of starts with that, but great question. Yeah. Thank you for it. That is definitely a great question. And that is really the focus of my channel is to help people that are just starting out. Um, we've got, I've got some videos coming up on gear, mm -hmm. uh, John's going to join me on an episode here soon. We're going to talk about gear. Uh, I've got some really cool episodes. I'm actually scheduled out all the way into late March now. So I'm like really excited because I'm not usually all that good at getting pre-scheduled. Um, I don't know if I'll ever get so fancy as to have my thumbnails published way ahead of time. You know what, Roy? I didn't know how to put in cards. Lala, I actually have a video called In Cards that goes into great <laughs> detail. I will, let's see, I always go the wrong way. I will put an info card over, over up above Walter's head. That's a link to that video. Saying <laughs> so go click there. It'll be up there. Yeah, you'll see it. It'll be levitating right above Walter's head. So, <laughs> yep. All right. I think you're getting more comfortable and better with each post interview. Knowing, <laughs> well, thank you, Philip. I, I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, I'm doing rookie mistakes tonight. Let's see. I left. Uh, so I did behind the scenes there. That's <laughs> <laughs> It's one. And okay. then I'm on Next. the wrong mic. Like, two. oh, man. 
So let's see. Uh, <laughs> and I've hit a couple wrong scenes, but maybe you guys didn't see that, so we'll be okay. But we'd love to come on. Hey, that'd be awesome. Um, and then love the synergy so true. Yes. Thank you. I'll work on once a week soon to start. Elise Marie, if you need help, mm-hmm. reach out to me. Uh, or or Walter, um, I would love to help you because I think your videos have a lot of potential. And I would love to just help you get organized so that you feel more comfortable doing that doing your work so just let me know mm-hmm. uh thank you mom god soon very soon yep looking forward to your live streams yep uh <laughs> i don't know which thing we said that was funny at the time because we're behind on comments aren't we let's mm. see <laughs> uh so you finish tonight will you edit this before you post it to your channel so i do not edit mm-hmm. my live streams that's a very good question um walter do you edit yours no i don't no um, I don't. in the beginning i used to in yeah. the beginning i used to and now I, I use, the, you know, re, the purpose of repurposing it in, in the chapters, yep. um, in the chapters and then repurposing. But, um, you know, it, it depends on the, how you're using it. If you're yeah. if you're going to take a, a long interview like this and then just shorten it and then say, hey, look, if you want to see the, 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 the extended of it, um, click into our membership page so you can watch the the full extended, you know, something like that, where they, again, you're capturing emails, you're building deeper relationship through community, through memberships. Now I will say on two videos I've done, I did go back and, and blur things out because I had somebody ask me a question on like, how do you do this on your phone? And mm-hmm. so I began demonstrating something. I realized, Oh, I'm totally showing off my email address or my phone number that's probably that's actually not a good thing you don't want to share that kind of information out not that i'm a closed book or anything but just mm-hmm. kind of protect yourself um so i had to go back and blur out and so the youtube studio tools will let you edit the video as far as adding a blur or cutting out part of a video let's say for some reason my i had a end scene that went black and just kept going for like a minute and a half i'm like i didn't see it happen on my side but after the video posted I know this is a minute and a half of just dark screen. Um, mm-hmm. So I went and edited that out. Uh, and you got to be aware, every time you make an edit, you only get one edit at a time. Very frustrating. I wish you could edit multiple things because mm-hmm. then it has to go through that whole process of your video getting processed again. So like I talked about going from standard to high def, it has mm-hmm. to process the video all over again. Um, mm-hmm. Plus, if you already added chapters, you got to redo the chapters because now they may not match up in time time stamps. So just mm-hmm. something to be aware of. I don't do I don't do my chapters so I know for sure I'm not going to do anything to my video. And ninety nine percent of the time I don't do anything to my videos. So um, question. can I just put my videos in LinkedIn? They're not that long as it is. Yeah, LinkedIn's a good platform. I I think LinkedIn is going to get bigger this year. Um, you know, Mr. Beast joined LinkedIn this year, so I got to think he's getting ready to do something over there. Just get ready. Mm-hmm. Hey Ken, we're just talking about you. Hey, official Ken, the, yep. the legend, the myth, the man, That's official true. Ken. Yep. I, there's so many court dramas happening right now, so there's definitely a lot of material for you, sir. <laughs> mm-hmm. Hey Ken, hey Ken, yeah. Hey Lala and Florence, hey Ken, hey John, <laughs> hey Ken. I think I did a seven-hour live once. How'd mm-hmm. that go? I'd be curious how that went. Let's see. Mm-hmm. The official Ken. True, long time to see. Uh, you too. You two guys started a new job, moved to Wisconsin, changed things up. Yeah, cool. Um, and, he, I think, and plus, I think I seen a, a recent um, uh, reel where he got a ton of snow. He was out there he, with a snowblower. He got, he, uh, yeah. That's right. I know, John, I'm 15 minutes behind. I'll just have to, you just have to hit me on uh, <laughs> on Instagram. <laughs> Lala told me that I had the uh, had, uh, live um, demo mode on so uh, I'm a bad friend I knew it was wrong in the beginning and didn't say anything I wouldn't have seen it till I got here unfortunately you have no mm-hmm. idea how great you sound now mm-hmm. <laughs> first person <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Brian yeah what's up kid yeah. connecting with supportive community is essential and you guys are awesome I you know I make mistakes and you guys can live with that I, I do appreciate that uh, that's not being a stream buddy yeah <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> yep thanks for the link yep yeah go go watch my video 
called end cards because uh, I'd had that question before. And if it was mm-hmm. me, you would not have held back. Yep. <laughs> I would have sent you an email if I saw something. I really would have. I, I do. I, I, I've got a friend of mine that does shorts, and they're doing captions, and it's great. But all the title words on YouTube shorts is covering up his captions. So I emailed him and said, hey, man, you need to move your captions just a little bit higher up because Mm -hmm. the title's Mm -hmm. covering up your captions. And since most people watch their videos, uh, hey, Denise, how you doing? Hey, Hey, Auntie. (laughs) If it's Tuesday night, I'm going live. Just going to put it there with Denise every Tuesday night. So, uh, hey, Denise. Hey, Denise. I'm struggling to figure out how to do chapters. You're in luck. I've done two videos on chapters. If you have the TubeBuddy tool, mm-hmm. even the free one I think does this, the TubeBuddy tool for chapters is amazing. It makes it so much easier. But I do have a video on how to do it without TubeBuddy, do the manual process on chapters. So I do have a video on that. Uh, it was fun. Yep. Trying to keep up. Yeah. Still have a foot of snow on the ground. Wow. And it's negative wow. six outside. I, I don't don't don't, you. don't send it my way, man. <laughs> Long Island don't need you else know what I've seen what you was doing in your reel. <laughs> I, I I don't envy you, Ken. I'm sorry. I, I I like snow, but I like the like two inches of snow and a snow day, and we go buy milk and bread. But we don't know how to drive, so we stay home. Work mm-hmm. is canceled, school's canceled. We stay home. That's the South. That's how we do it here, because we don't have a clue how to drive. There'll be wrecks everywhere. I'm like, mm-hmm. really? If you just driven slow. Or put like a bunch of concrete blocks in the back of your car, which I've done that before. Of course, I still did a 360 one time with concrete <laughs> blocks in the back of an old Chevrolet. Um, oh, wow. So just hit a slick spot and it just went, but then it, it, it pointed the right direction when it stopped, so it worked out. Um, okay. So, <laughs> so yeah. Uh, yep. See so you on TikTok, just put two fingers on the screen and it clears your screen. Yeah. So many people watch like that. Mm-hmm. TubeBuddy is a great with each other. I love TubeBuddy. It does an amazing job of chapters. And I do have a video about doing chapters using TubeBuddy. So I do recommend giving a quick glance um, to look at it. They cancel recess at negative 35 here. Oh, at negative wow. 35, they cancel recess. Well, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> so so what? what negative 10, 10? You still got to go to recess? Wow. I hate that's when my brutal. kids come home without their fingers because of frostbite. So. Um, <laughs> Do not get on the monkey bars, kids. It's cold. I'm telling you, <laughs> stay off of that. <laughs> All right, Walter, thank you yes, so sir. much for being on the show tonight, sir. This was a great episode. I really enjoyed it. And thank you to everybody that showed up in spite of my bad audio. See, audio is key. You got to have mm-hmm. good audio. So thank you for everybody. Um, <laughs> and yes, I'm caught up finally, thankfully. Uh just thank you everybody that comes and watches my show every Tuesday night. I am so thankful to you guys. You guys are so awesome and supportive and just just amazing. So I love you guys. You guys, thank you for watching. And now I'm supposed to hit one of the buttons to call the action. Yeah, I'm supposed to hit that subscribe button. So everybody, if you hadn't hit that like button, please hit the like button. And if you haven't subscribed, subscribe. Mm-hmm. And that's it. We're out of here. Ta-da. Outro. <laughs> <laughs>